What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound Attack once again, coming at you with yet another Talking Head video. We asked on Twitter, once again, follow me at Son of Attack on Twitter if you want to vote in the polls for the Talking Head videos, and I will hopefully get to the topic that you are most interested in for the day. Tonight, we're going to be talking about blockchain applications and not necessarily the best blockchain applications but the blockchain applications I use on a day-to-day -day basis. This isn't to be confused with coins. However, we will talk about the coin integrations. And of course, this isn't to be confused with tokens, but it typically does use tokens, right? So without further ado, let's hop into it. Right here, I got the first application, Brave Browser. So. This is the browser reimagined. It is based on Chromium, so you can still get all your Chromium plugins, all that sort of thing. But what it enables is the ability for you to earn BAT token. Now, this is a big deal because you have to realize that as the world shifts and things change, we've been talking about things, you know, on a macro level. I guess in society about UBI and universal basic income, that sort of thing. This answers that problem. You can earn the token while browsing the internet. If you're a content creator, you can come over here and you can sign up to earn BAT if people are watching your YouTube videos on the browser. Yes, I've signed up. Yes, you should be watching this on the Brave browser. Go ahead and give it a shot. It's really, really easy to transfer over from Chrome or Edge or Firefox. I highly recommend it. It has a lot of good security features built in, such as ad blockers, tracking blockers, so on and so forth. It works fantastic with MetaMask. Go pick it up. This is probably my favorite one and obviously most the one I use most every day. Now on these like test systems that you see me using right now, I'm using Edge it's because I don't keep anything on this system. It, I don't really install anything except video games on it either. And I like to keep it all separate. Now let's talk about the next application. We have DLive right here. DLive is a blockchain based Twitch competitor. Now it's biggest claim to fame was of course hiring on PewDiePie really early on and that was pretty incredible because obviously getting PewDiePie to sign up with them really drove some traffic however they have slowed down quite a bit you know you come here and look at the highest views and that sort of thing it's nowhere near Twitch where I think they really messed up was with the UI not the UI as far as usability, because that is spot on. It's really like, I think it's the colors. I can't stand the yellow and the white and the gray. There needs to be a different contrast going on there. It looks outdated from just the color aspect. Everything else works really well, clicking into streams. The stream quality is very high. And the best part of all, you earn lemons by watching. You can then donate those lemons, but you don't have to. It's a pretty fantastic deal that I think is the future of live streaming for uh, being able to earn income. And once again, this goes back to capabilities for universal basic income. It allows everybody to start earning just for participating. These are the kinds of things that are gonna change the world these are the th kinds of things you want to be looking for when we're talking about applications. Right in that same vein, we have Steam. Steam is essentially like a blog where you can or earn money, of course, and a ton of other things. There's also transactions and so on and so forth. Definitely check out Steam, Steam it. Make sure you keep up to date with what they're doing. I don't use it as much, but I still use it every day purely because there is so much crypto content on Steam that you are able to learn a ton about cryptocurrency. So I am on there every day. I don't post on there though. And that should probably change. If I'm gonna go ahead and talk about these types of things, maybe 
I should be using them as well. I do use DLive, by the way, and it is DLive.tv slash Son of a Tech. And this is where we will be doing all of our streams over here. So if you're interested in watching me play video games and that sort of thing, stop on by, throw me a little follow. It would be super cool of you. Okie dokie. So finally, the big Dottie, Dottie, Dottie. Finally, the big daddy, Uniswap. Uniswap is amazing. So Uniswap is a decentralized finance application that allows you to swap tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. And it is quite possibly single-handedly the number one reason for bringing cryptocurrencies back to life. One of the reasons it's very, very successful is because it maintains the principle of crypto, which is keeping third parties out. Now, in theory, of course, you could say that Uniswap itself is a third party, but because it's built on blockchain and because it is based on a token itself, the Unitoken, it's not necessarily controlled by a central source or a central third party. It allows you to not only swap tokens, and we have a how-to on how to do this, but it also allows you to add liquidity and adding liquidity basically gives you rewards. If you're a provider, a liquidity provider, it gives you rewards when people are swapping between the tokens that you have added liquidity to. Like I said, single-handedly pretty much brought the crypto space back to life. It has brought mining back to life because it has increased the amount of transactions on the network. And we owe a lot to this technology and this application. There are plenty of others coming along, of course, like HoneySwap and so on and so forth. We have a whole token system and swap system now on Polkadot, which we can talk about later. And there are benefits to that. In fact, from a technology perspective, a lot of people are saying that DOT is a lot better than Ethereum. And maybe if you're interested, we can do a Polkadot versus Ethereum video. Just let me know in the comments section below. Finally, the last thing that we need to talk about is good old Jack Dorsey on Twitter. Now, if you guys remember, or you recall, just earlier this year in the United States, the Capitol was raided. And as a result, we had a whole bunch of political discourse. Well, not really. We had political shutdown of discourse, primarily driven by big tech companies such as Twitter. And regardless of your opinion on this sort of thing, like which side you hang on to or which side you're on, look, ideologically you like or ideology should never have a place in preventing speech in my humble opinion period end of story if it's a bad idea even i don't think you block it because all you do if you block a bad idea is make everybody think that it holds some weight now in the case of twitter they banned donald trump the sitting u.s president of the united states and he, they banned him based on basically the idea that he was inciting violence uh, at the Capitol. Once again, it's not a political statement. What you need to pay attention to, though, is why this happened. Now, the argument is that Twitter and Jack Dorsey are liberals and they want to silence the conservatives, so on and so forth. Same with Facebook and so on. But one of the really interesting tweets that Jack Dorsey put up after the ban of Trump. He said that all they basically had to ban Trump and the only way that they could prevent this in the future was by moving to the blockchain. The reasoning for this is later on, you saw basically Amazon and AWS completely ban the application parlor. Once again, regardless of your opinion on this, you need to start thinking about it from the perspective of the power of big tech. Now, since AWS controls a majority of the server infrastructure in the United States and the world as a whole, they can basically utilize that to silence or censor whatever they want. This is a problem no matter what side of the political fence you're on, and I don't care to have a political argument in the comment section. Once again, 
I do not care to have a political argument in the comment section of this video, but it is important for crypto to understand why blockchain is relevant in this. Blockchain will eventually allow you to prevent any sort of censorship by decentralizing the networks. We will be able to communicate with free and open speech on the internet. And Jack Dorsey now is funding a small independent team of up to five open source architects, engineers, and designers to develop an open and decentralized standard for social media. The goal is for Twitter to ultimately be a client of this standard. No matter what you think of Jack Dorsey, no matter what you think of Donald Trump, no matter what you think of left, right, whatever, I don't, I don't even know, cats and dogs, this is a good thing. We need somebody like Jack Dorsey to be funding projects like this. Now, from my understanding, as you read through this entire thread, this will be also open to other developers to also build onto that standard, meaning it doesn't matter what your beliefs are, you will be able to build onto the standard. This will be important because it will prevent censorship of, of basically by decentralizing ownership of the internet. At the end of the day, that's what it is. Right now, as things stand, everything is owned. All the server infrastructure is owned by about three companies. Really, if you get down to the nitty gritty, you got Google, you got Microsoft, and you got Amazon. Sure, there's private servers, small ones, there's providers that provide virtual private servers, but their infrastructure is not large enough to handle the traffic of something like Twitter or even the smaller parlor, right? It's not like parlor was able to just spin it up on something like, I don't know, DigitalOcean or Vulture, both great services, by the way, I utilize them. And this is going to be very important. And I want you guys to pay attention to it. Once again, I want to clarify, I do not care about your political alignment. I do not want to hear it in the comments. This is about the good for everyone, regardless of your opinion. All right, this is for the good of everyone. And so everyone can have a voice. And that's what I also want to say. When I say I don't want an argument about politics, feel free to have an argument about free speech and being able to voice your opinions because I want to hear everybody's opinion and I want everybody to be able to post their opinions on the internet without feeling like they're gonna lose their entire internet business by getting shut down from Amazon or Microsoft or Google or anything like that. So at the end of the day, these are the applications I use every day along with a little bonus at the end there because I thought that was freaking awesome uh, that Jack Dorsey is working on this and or at least funding it and i think there's going to be an amazing push and boost for cryptocurrency some projects you might want to look out for uh, cloudflare is integrating into the ethereum network uh, to deploy ipfs that's going to be a big big deal make sure you pay attention to that and at the end of the day ethereum is the current coin that is empowering all this. So regardless of what your opinions on Ethereum are, from the mining perspective, we do have to take into account that from the crypto perspective, it is enabling the most amount of use cases currently out of any other coin or blockchain project in existence. And yes, that means that Ethereum, in my opinion, is undervalued right now. All right. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday.